I'm overwhelmed, thank you. I, we are busy today. We've got 90 minutes for a five-day thing, so I'm, uh, I'm going to go through the introductions really shortly. My name is Aino Kori, I'm from Denmark, 47 years old, got three children, the oldest is 23. I have a PhD in computer science from the last millennium. <laughs> it's actually true, it's a bit embarrassing, but that's how it is. Uh, so I'm going to do the, the shortest design sprint I've ever heard of. And um, I hope you'll play along, because there will be some interaction between you, not between us. I had hoped that this would be different, but I had to change it a bit with a number of people. So first, how many of you have attended a design sprint before? How many of you have facilitated a design sprint before? Yeah, okay, good. So the, you're the right audience. So a design sprint, for those of you who haven't really looked at it before, is a very quick way to design, prototype, and test the viability of an idea, a product, or a feature. So we all know that cycle is going between having an idea, trying it out, uh, seeing how it works, um, reflecting on how it works, and then changing it, how you build it. But the design sprint is shortcutting this process. So in a very short period of time, you can get an idea and you can learn about that idea. That is sort of the whole point of the design sprint. And that's why we call it a sprint, because it's not a marathon, it's a sprint. We're doing it very, very quickly. And <clears throat> so, for, for making a design sprint, preparation is very important. You need to have a big, important challenge, something that's worth five days of focus work. And it could be like, it could be a software system, it could be a small app, it could be a new feature on an existing system, it could be an idea you want to try out, it could be anything you want to try out. What it cannot be, as I've learned from bad experiences, is a debugging session. It simply doesn't work for a debugging session. So project leaders will think, wonderful, we can get all this done in five days, so all these bugs we can get done. But that is not really what the design sprints are built for. The design sprints are built for innovation and trying out new things. So you also, for each design sprint, you need somebody called the decider. So it is, it is a collective work, but you need somebody who can put their foot down at some point and say, this is what we do because there's only so much we can do collectively by deciding. And normally in a design sprint, you'll have around seven to nine people. So that's why I've decided that each table have their own design sprint. So if you have a critical mass, then it'll be fine. You over there probably don't have a critical mass for doing a design sprint. So if you want to, if you want to engage in the activities, you, you better move to another table. You don't have to, I'm just saying that two is, two is too small. So uh, for each table now, I'd like you to decide who is the decider, right? And the decider will only have two jobs today, so it's an easy, easy job for the decider. So you have one minute to find out who's the decider on your table. And then when you know the decider stands up, Oh, so, uh, sorry. So the role of the decider is if people cannot agree, then the decider will say, this is what we go for, this is the decision. And normally that would be a multi-million dollar responsibility, but today it's just being laughed at, right? So. And there's a bit of exercise in it as well. So everybody, all the deciders, please raise, rise up, stand up. Right, and now all the deciders walk to here where all the material is. And the first job of the decider is to take a big piece of paper and uh, some pens and some post-it notes and some A4 paper as well, some printer paper. And if it's not enough, you, can all, you know where to get it. Now you're the deciders. Thank you. 
okay. I'll just let the last deciders run around. So, uh, and you also need to find the right room and the materials. So it should be like a room that's not too big, it should be cozy, so we don't really fit in here. And it should have windows so that you can look outside the window at times, which we also don't have, but perhaps you can find a nice view on your laptop or something like that if you, if you need to look at something else. But let's get to it now. The design sprint is five days and you do different things on each day. So the first day is where you map the problem, you try to understand the problem, then you sketch the problem, then you decide on what sketch you want to do and you decide on the storyboard for the prototype, then you create a prototype and then you test it. <clears throat> but we only have 90 minutes, right? So what do we do? I was considering very, very much what I should do with this, and my first plan was to just make everything shorter and faster, which would have been terrible, and you wouldn't have learned anything. So I decided instead that the whole mapping the first day I will do up here, and then you will do day two and day three, and then day three, four and day five, I will just explain. And I decided that because to me, the magic part of the design sprint are those two days. Everything else that happens, you've tried before, and perhaps you've tried the things on day two and three before. But to me, that is sort of the crucial point. That is what I want you to try to experiment with, okay? So I'm sorry we had to skip some of it, but I hope you'll get something out of this better than just very short of everything. So normally when I start a design sprint, what I do is that I have an icebreaker. And the reason why I have an icebreaker is twofold. First, I want people to relax and have fun. I believe in laughter. I think laughter is very important for the well-being of people and for the trust between people and for people liking each other. So I want to start with a laugh in some way. And then also because when people attend a design sprint, they probably just read their email or they talked to their spouses or they thought about the problems their kids have. So they have what you call a brain residue. And we want to kick that brain residue out of the brain. So I want people to do something differently so that they can start thinking about what we're doing right now. And an activity that I thought we'd try was tribes, but I don't think we have time for it right now, so I'll save it for later. If there's time in the end, we can try it out, unfortunately. And then the ground rules in a uh, design sprint is that the, uh, the facilitator is in charge of the time. I've got one of these time timers, and preferably I would have liked to bring a time timer for each table, but I'll let you know how much time has gone. And also you tell people that don't look at your phones, don't look at your computers during this design sprint. If you need to answer the phone, you go outside. If you need to send an email, it's fine, but you go outside. And you also have time in the breaks. And that's because people say they can multitask, but it's a big fat lie. Nobody can multitask. So uh, if you see somebody sitting with a laptop or a phone when you're talking to them, you feel a little bit like they don't respect you. And it's very important that you listen to each other. So the overview of the schedule is that the first day you understand, you listen to experts, you have questions, you, look, you talk to the decision makers in the organization. The second day you sketch, you brainstorm, you alter the old ideas, you get inspired. Oh, spelling error, sorry. And the third day we decide what we want to focus on. The fourth day we build the prototype and we test the prototype. And the fifth day we validate it with real users. But as I said, we have to narrow down on the sketching and the deciding today. So what happens at a five-day retrospective design sprint is actually that you, you, you use divergent and convergent thinking all the time. So I don't know if you know about it, but most meetings should have divergent and convergent thinking. So you start off with knowing what you want, hopefully you're on the same ground, and then you diverge and you discuss different ideas and you might not be in agreement, and then you converge again and you decide what kind of understanding you have and that's what should happen during the first day. The second day you sketch, you open up all the ideas again. Everything is open, everything is okay, you might not be in agreement. And then the third day you decide, you narrow it down, you decide what you want to have. And then what happens on day four and day five is also that you have a prototype with different possibilities or perhaps even more than one prototype. And then when you validate it with the users on the fifth day, after you validated it with users, you have sort of a retrospective session talking about what they said and what that means then for the future, where do you want to go with this idea slash system slash prototype. So we start, now it's Monday morning, and we want to understand. And one thing that I think is also interesting to have at the design sprint, it doesn't stem from design sprint. Uh, it was there before design sprint. But it's something called how might we. 
So everybody in a design sprint get a pen and some post-it notes, and whenever they have a question, or if they are critical about something, they write down, how might we do this? Because sometimes when you hear somebody coming up with ideas or giving a presentation, then you'll sit there thinking, ah, could never be done. It won't work. We tried this before. Stupid idea. So to me, the magic in the how might we is that instead of thinking negative thoughts like that, you're trying to rephrase it in your mind, and you're saying, how might we actually do this? How might we solve this problem? So you're starting the positive thinking already there. And the how might we is just a specific form of note-taking that you use in a design sprint, and I'll show you later what we use it for. So imagine that you're now making how might we notes, you shouldn't, because I made them all for you. Now, a big important challenge is what we wanted, and it was really hard for me to find a big important challenge, because coming from Denmark, we have, our challenges are really silly. So I was thinking like a library system, and I thought, nah, not really a big important challenge, right? And then, uh, and then I thought about Dr. Sengupta's uh, keynote this morning, because I've seen it before at another conference. And she's talking about air pollution and the way that, she, that her research should, uh, should help out with this air pollution. And I thought, perhaps there's an air pollution problem in India, in India, as there is almost everywhere, so perhaps that is a big, important challenge. Now, I know maybe some of you are sitting, oh, I really would have liked, in this design sprint with Aino, to create a little app about all the restaurants in India, Oh, I would really have liked a weather app. Oh, I would like a new feature on my car system. But I decided to work on an idea instead. Uh, but it is the same that you're doing. It's the same movements you're doing, whether it's a software system or an idea. So what we try to do on day one is that we hear from different experts. So we have invited people who knows about this problem. It could be people who know about the problem and people who tried solving it in different ways. And you listen to these experts, and while you do that, you write these how might we notes. But you also create the sprint questions. So what questions do we want to have answered? So instead of saying, we want to create this app that can do this, we're trying to phrase it again as questions. We're saying, what is it that we want to learn? Because the design sprint is about learning as fast as you can. To meet our long-term goal, what needs to be true, and if the project fails, what might be the cause of that? So these are the things that you think about before you start. And now you will hear from some, from some experts, but the experts is just snippets from newspapers I found online. So sources of air pollution in India are different. There's something from dust and construction, waste burning, transport, diesel generators, domestic cooking, but the biggest is uh, from the industries, or the other way around. Anyway, it's different things that goes into the air pollution in India. So that was very expertly said. Another expert said, what is the solution to Delhi's smoke problem? There's some moss that can eat air pollution, and I know that that's something that they use in Germany as well, that they have moss on the walls on the side of the road so that they eat the air pollution. And then another thing I read was that 13% of India's deaths can be attributed to bad air. Roughly 1.24 million people died in 2017 from India's air pollution. That seems really high. Is that, does that make sense to you? Hmm. Yeah, in Denmark, we die from alcoholism and suicide. I don't know if that's better. So that was the experts that you just listened to. We tried to make this very short, and now the sprint questions, I also created the sprint questions for you. <clears throat> so what questions do we want to have answered? Obviously, how do we get the air pollution in India down? To meet our long-term goal, what needs to be true? Well, we need to get only 10% people dying from bad air. This is the result that we want to see. If the projects fail, what might be the cause of that? Lack of money for technology, culture change, amount of people being too late, perhaps. So these are the things that could make it impossible for us to, to get this long-term goal. And at this point in the design sprint, you would now organize the, eight, the how might we uh, notes. So you would imagine that everybody had been writing how might we notes like crazy, and you have a wall looking like this, and now we want to make groups of it and try to make meaning of it. So I tried to make some uh, how might we notes yesterday evening. <coughs> so it could be how might we remove the particles already in the air? How might we get vehicles to pollute less? How might we fund industries to research how to improve? How might we change transportation entirely? How might we make the industry pollute less? How might we mutate plants in India to suck up the pollution? How might we improve the way of domestic cooking? How might we get fewer fe fewer vehicles and change the way waste is uh, disposed. So these are some of the things that could come up in how might we. 
Now, the next point that you're doing Monday is that you create a map. You try to create a map with all the different participants in this scenario, and you also say what would be the solution of this. So what you do in the beginning is that you say, well, what are the different actors in this scenario? And I try to talk about industry owners, drivers, researchers, and home cooks. So these would be the actors, so those are the ones you think about first. And then you think about what you want to achieve, and we want to achieve less pollution. So we try to make a map from the actors to the goal, and we try to come up with things that could happen if it was a software system. It could be different kinds of users that are interacting with the system in different ways to achieve something. In this sense, it's an idea we're trying to achieve, challenge we're trying to overcome, and then we're seeing, well, perhaps understanding how to change transport is something that both the driver and the researcher could take part in, and then that would lead to less pollution. And what is important with creating a map is both the discussions that you have here because this is a way where you try to figure out if you understand it in the same way. So we're now doing the converging thing in the understanding day, so we had the diversion with all the different how might we and experts, but now we're trying to converge into an understanding that will give us a map that we can use to work on for the next days. And what's important also is to find the critical moment. So there'll be a lot of discussion about the critical moment. It could be, um, can we gain uh, what can we make the industry under understand that they can gain in the long run from having less pollution? Or it could be that plants can reduce bad air, that could be the critical moment. Or it could be that we understand how to change transport. And in normal cases, there'll be a lot of discussion, and this is where the decider comes in and says, this is what we want to focus on. So for each table, when you'll start working in a minute, your decider will figure out what part of this map you will focus on on your little table in your design sprint. Because now we'll start sketching. So this is Tuesday morning already. We had a day in 10 minutes. I hope you enjoyed it, especially the lunch was delicious. So in the Tuesday morning, you start with something called lightning demos. And the lightning demos is interesting. The lightning demos is that other people, all the people in the design sprint come up with things that they want to show. They want to demo something that they like. So for instance, if you're building an app, it could be that people show their, their favorite apps or explain why their apps are good, showing it on a big screen. This is what you can do with this app, I really like this. And in this idea with the pollution, perhaps they can show what they have done in other countries or perhaps they can show some research they've heard about that is just starting to, to um, take pace. So the lightning demos would show different ways of doing things. And then you have the, what they call the four-step sketch, which is the, uh, the individual brainstorm. And then also a thing that we will think about, but that we won't do, is to recruit customers for Friday. Because Friday we will validate our prototypes, and it's very important that we have actual customers, not just our mothers or our daughters, but actual customers. And we need at least five to get a critical mass to look at our prototype. So, what you will actually do is that you will have this four, four steps st sketching. And what we normally do is that we gather key, key info in 20 minutes, we doodle rough solutions in 20 minutes, we try rapid variations in eight minutes, and we figure out the details in 30 minutes. We don't have that kind of time, so you have to be quick. So the first thing we do is that we gather key info, and you've got only five minutes for that instead of 20. And what I want you to do in these five minutes is to take some sort of paper, it could be like a small piece of paper or a post-it note, and you write down all the different information that you've heard about with India's air pollution, but also things that you know, not, not just something that's in the room. But imagine in a normal design sprint, you'll walk around, you'd look at the map, you'd look at all the how might we notes, you'll look at all the notes that you made from the experts, and then you'll figure out what is it actually that I learned today? So just write it down. If you like text, you just write text. If you like pictures, you just draw pictures. Nobody's going to look at this, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. So I'll invite you to gather key info now in five minutes, and I'll stop you after the five minutes individually on the tables. And there's more paper, printer paper up here. It could be the poster soil paper, it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever you like. But 
Hmm? Yeah, you can take the information that I gave you, but also if you have any more information, find in, find more information. Normally you would have a lot of information, but we didn't really have time for that. If anybody has any questions for me, just raise your hand and I'll walk over there. Think about the source, or we, if we also come up with the solution, should we also just uh, any notes, anything, 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 yes. It could be things on the walls, things that I've said, or anything that you remember. This is just to get all the information in your head down on the paper so you can make use of it later. Good question. So it's everything that you can think about. So right now we just want to take everything that's in your head and put it down on a piece of paper about because air about air pollution. Yeah, it could be the problems, but it could be the solutions. It could be anything. Yeah, it's just so that you don't have to have it all in your head while we're doing the next steps to ease your brain. Yeah. Sorry. Question is over. Hmm? You choose one and then you think about all the things that relate to that, but it could be things that doesn't relate to this particular point. What I want you to do right now is get the things out of your head down on paper so that you can make use of it later. the notes but you can put solution ideas into the notes what I want you to do is get everything out of your heads and down on paper brain dump <laughs> anything Right, <clears throat> that was five minutes and uh, I got the same question everywhere, so there was apparently something I forgot to say. But to me, the, the, the first thing about gathering the key info is about making a brain dump because you know the working part of your brain can only think about four plus minus two things. It's not the seven plus minus two things anymore because the young people have 
I don't know what happened anyway. So uh, you, you can only have a very few things in your working memory and you want that down on paper so that when you go to the next step, you can use the working memory and then just look at the paper. Make sense? Good. So the next part, you'll have 10 minutes for this. This is where you will doodle the rough solutions. Again, it is individually. Again, nobody needs to see it. It can be as expressive or ugly as you want it to be. Again, it could be pictures, it could be text, but now you are focusing on the solutions. In the gathering key in for you are focusing on everything, but now you're trying to focus on solutions. Sketch anything that could be a solution. And I would uh, prefer if you used a piece of paper that was bigger than a post-it note, but smaller than the big one. So either you get some of these, or perhaps you have your own pieces of paper. So does anybody need this? Are there any questions before we start this doodle rough solutions? So that I... No, no, it's still individually. Still individually. I mean, it's okay if you talk to each other, but you don't have to be in agreement. It's your individual ones. Hmm? Yep. All these four sketches are in a diversion for everything. And there's a little bit of conversion, but that's individual at the end. Do you have paper? Do you have paper? Sorry, it's, a, it's the time in Romania. I borrowed this computer from another speaker. I don't know how to turn that off. Now you know the time in Romania if you understand Romanian. And if anybody is done, they can spend the last two minutes helping the other team members by taking a piece of paper like this for each team member and folding it so that you have eight little squares. Only if you're done. Like this. Every team member, yeah? I've got two here if somebody wants it. You know how to do it? Mm -hmm. a, fre a fresh piece of paper. Fresh piece of paper for everybody, not the one that you already sketched on. It has to look like this. So it's three folds. Two to the third squares it gives. Mathematically. I just I'll give you a few minutes just to fold before I go on. Perhaps if the tables where everybody has a folded piece of paper, the decider can stand up so that I can assess how far you are. One table ready, two, three, four. Does that mean that you're all done? Okay. Right. 
Okay. So the next step is supposed to be stressful, and today we'll e make it even more stressful. So normally you'll have eight minutes to make eight sketches, right? So you look at all your own rough solutions. Again, this is individually. You look at all your own rough solutions, and you'll perhaps pick one or two, and then you'll make variations on that one. So you'll take one of your ideas or two of your ideas and you'll make very rapid variations on that one. And each variation should be in a little rectangle here on the piece of paper. So here's perhaps the original one and there's a variation, 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 variation. And see how far you can get in four minutes. Nobody needs to see this. So it can be, again, really ugly, right? I'll start the time. Sorry. One, one solution in each rectangle, so you choose one of your ideas, one of your solution ideas, and you make variations on that, or you choose two and make variations on that. Yeah, the same solution, many variations. And the time will start now, four minutes. But again, it's individually, individually, Okay, that was four minutes. I hope you're sweating a little bit because that's sort of part of the exercise. So these were what they call the crazy eight, but it was crazy fours today. The next step is that you need a piece of paper looking like this. If you do not have a blank piece of paper looking like this, you better get it, okay? Now this is where we normally have 30 minutes or perhaps more. Sometimes people get a little more time because they need more time. It's sort of the facilitator's role to look at how people are doing. And if they're still frantically writing and drawing, then give them a little bit of time. Because this is the one that other people should see. So you should do your best with this one. You don't have to be very good at drawing. It's okay just to sketch something and to come up with some text. But this is the important piece of paper for the next day because this is actually your solution sketch. So you will choose one of your solutions, one of your ideas, and you will sketch it on a piece of paper. And this is the piece of paper that other people should see, and this is a piece of paper you will be using when you're figuring out what to actually do in your solution, solution to the challenge or to create the app or the system. So it's very important that you give it a title. It should be anonymous. But you don't have to put your name on it, but give it a title so that it's easy to discuss it and people can point at it and say, well, um, Peter's coffee shop or Anna's really weird idea or whatever. Um, just put some name on it. Uh, well, sorry, a title on it. And what is important then is that you, you draw it out like different steps. So perhaps you, your solution is just one big thing but could also be, in this case, for instance, creating awareness, trying to figure out what to do about it, or doing something actual about it. So I want you to make a piece of paper with a title, and then something that is drawn or written so that other people can evaluate whether they like this idea or not. So if there are any questions, we might as well take them in plenum before we start. Any questions about this? Yes? One solution, or... One solution, but it could be different steps. So if it was an app or a system, it would be like different windows of the system. In this case, with the solving the idea of uh, solving the air pollution idea, it would be different steps in solving the air pollution. But it's, it's one, one solution. 
Yeah. One, sorry, one solution per person, this is still individual. And then tomorrow, which is in about 15 minutes, you will be evaluating each other's ideas. But right now, it's only your idea, individual idea. Don't look at anybody else's ideas right now. This is still you. One of the eight. Yes, thank you. No criteria for the idea. It, it can also be a crazy, insane idea that cannot be implemented because these ideas, when you decide what to prototype, you just take the things that you can implement. Does it make sense? So you can just dream. <laughs> 10 minutes starts now. Somebody want to use it uh, in your service and that meaning it that help. Sorry, can you say that again? You want to leverage already existing some of the solutions and you want to implement in your uh, whatever the solution you're going to give. Yeah. Is that uh, so because the solution is already existing, you're trying to leverage it for your Yeah, solution. yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. And you, you know the solution, the only thing you just need implementation. Yeah, sometimes that is where it ends. Sometimes it can be a very innovative, wonderful idea, and sometimes it turns out that the best thing to do is a variation to what you already have, or implementation of somebody else's solution. And of course then you think that's sad, but it's still making a solution to a problem. It, it's not always fantastic, new, innovative ideas. Yeah, so you know, based on the research, they are existing, but you haven't used anyone to use it. So in that case, you won't be thinking much where you just you'll be thinking how Feasible that can be <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you make something that you think you'd like to have and then the next step we figure out what is feasible. Make sense? Basically, the tree which is produced the high oxygen and it and yeah. carbon dioxide and is created. Yeah, and what's the title? Do you have a title? I'll, I'll just talk a little bit while you're putting the last uh, details on your sketch. Remember to have a title for it, call it the smart city or whatever you want, no more air pollution or must for the win. Um, what I want to say about this with the sketching, because so um, Tuesday is almost done. And as I said in the beginning, I really like the design sprints because the brainstorming is different than I normally see. I've been to a lot of innovation workshops with developers and other people. And then we have the, the brainstorm about solutions to problems. But unfortunately, it is only what is happening in their heads and they like to make really good solutions. So there's some things about the design sprint that differs. And one thing is that you, you listen to the experts, you look at what other people have done, and you start with the questions instead of the answers. And then what you do in the sketching is also interesting because you force people to make variations of an idea very rapidly. 
And forcing people to make rapid variations of an idea means that the part of their brain that are saying this is not a good idea, it doesn't have time to set in. So the rapid variations is very interesting in not allowing the brain to stop you from being creative. So those are the parts I really like about the design sprint. Then I had some different questions walking around, and one question was, what if what I come up with is just what other people have done already, and this is just us implementing it in our own way? Well, of course, sometimes you have a design sprint that does not change the world, that is not hyper-innovative, that is not like a, a brand new idea that nobody saw before, but that is actually, as I said before, part of a design sprint because you cannot expect those bright ideas to pop up like every month. So you have to accept, and I think that's part of it, that a lot of the ideas that you have are actually just variations of things you've already seen, and now you try to implement it in a new way. And I think embracing that is also very important, actually. Right. So that was Tuesday, and we're going out to have a nice dinner together, and as usual, I'll have too many gin and tonics, and now it's Wednesday morning, and... Uh, I'm a bit tired, and that's unfortunate because today is really a hard day as well. So today is the, uh, the second converging, where we're trying to decide what is the idea that we want to work on Thursday, what is the idea that we want to validate with the users Friday. So for those of you who just arrived, you just find a table to sit at, unless you want to be able to run out again, it's okay to stand down there, I know that feeling. Um, so what we're doing Wednesday is that we're going through a lot of motions. I'm just going to go through them very rapidly now, and then we're going to delve into them, and these are the things that you'll also be doing today. So the first thing that you'll do is an art museum, where you'll share the ideas, and hopefully the, uh, the, the solution that you created is something that other people can read, uh, or at least make meaning of. Because first you'll have something called a heat map, where you'll need these uh, dots down here. So. So the red dots are for the deciders. All the deciders get one dot. And these black dots are for everybody else. So everybody, also the deciders, get one of these. I hope I have enough, otherwise I've got more. So then you have the speed critique. And the speed critique is interesting because you very, very rapidly give critique to somebody's um, solution. But while you're giving critique, they cannot say anything. It's like a writer's workshop where they have to be quiet, because if you're writing a poem or a novel, you're not there to tell the reader, no, what I actually meant with this, with this. So you have to be quiet as the author and listen to other people's critique, because it has to stand on its own legs. Then you have a straw poll, then you try to decide what you want to go on with, and again, the decider has the biggest vote. The decider has the super vote, and then you make a storyboard, and the big pieces of paper are for the storyboard we'll make at the end of the day. And now we'll go into these different things, and you'll have very short time to do each of them. So take a deep breath. First, create the art museum. What you normally do is that right before we start Wednesday, you put up all the solution ideas on the wall so that you have like a Louvre or an art museum where you can walk around and look like at it. We cannot do that today. So the art museum, I thought, is that you just pass on your solution sketch to the next one, and then hopefully, in 10 minutes, you will have looked at all the solution sketches that you have on the table. Okay? So again, just to give me an assessment, I've said 10 minutes, but that's like, that's, I know 10 minutes. I'm always cheating with the minutes. I'm hoping you're not looking at the watch. So when, when your group have seen all the solution sketches, please could the decider stand up again so that I can see when you're done? Okay? So you have now 10 minutes to pass all the solution sketches around. Don't talk about them, because they should be on their own. Just look at them. So the only thing you can say is that if you cannot read what other people have written, you can ask what it actually says, okay? That's the only thing.
Yeah, so question, do I need to write any questions? No, just look at them and only ask a question if you actually cannot read what it says, then it's okay to read it aloud. Half an hour more, so you have you don't time, right? Yeah, I'm following my schedule. It's hard. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but I got a watch up there. Thank you. Take some of these. Did you take some of these already? No, just take two. Oh. One, just take a whole water. Then. Uh -huh. Just take a whole bus. And one, one for the designer. So, um, do do all the designers stand up at the tables where you've seen everything? You've seen everything. 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 Who's still struggling? Perhaps it's easier to ask that question. Right. Thank you. Now, let's pretend you've been through the art museum. Now, as I said, for, for everybody, including the decider, you can take the black dots and put a, put a black dot on what you like. It doesn't have to be a black dot for the whole solution sketch. It could be just a little part of the solution sketch that you like. So that's why it says, find a good point, not find a good solution. Find a good point. And if you're really keen on giving more points, you can do that. I've got more of these black ones up here, OK? But the red ones are for the deciders later. Well, so. Normally you get as many points as you need, but today I say just at least one. Hmm? Red, red ones? Uh, yeah, I'll get some more red ones. Just a minute. Yeah, I forgot I had it in my head. Something like this. Is that okay? Do you know this? 
just take some of it. And again, you don't have to agree on this. This is individually. Okay. I do. So everybody gets at least one black, and the decider gets a red. You didn't get any red dots? Does somebody have an extra red dot for this table? You only need one red dot for each table? Can you just take one red dot? Just take one. So, take a red dot. As a decider, I have to choose one solution. Then only I can. Sorry? So, as a decider, I have to look around mm -hmm. the teams. And, and yeah. Solutions. So, you vote with, with black dots as everybody else, and then you have one super vote that you put there. Super okay. Vote. So, that, that, that idea need, can be. As a that, decider, we need to select. Then that, mm -hmm. then that yeah. idea can be selected. Yeah. Did that work? It looks like it. Okay. Are you are you sort of done? Sort of done. So the next the next step is the speed critique. And I'm I'm just gonna Yeah, question? What was the question? Combination of two. Zones. Yeah, that's fine. You don't have to decide yet. So, so what happened here? What happened here was that you looked at the different points of the solutions. You are not supposed. You're not supposed to have decided on one solution right now. Could I ask the corner to be a bit quiet? So, it's, so you're not supposed. If you're thinking right now, but we don't have like an unanimous solution, that is quite fine. That is not where you should be right now. Right now, you should have some solution sketches with some black dots and one red dot where you can see what people are thinking right now, okay? So it's just like a heat map, trying to figure out where you are. The, the, next, step, the next step is what is called the speed critique. And normally you have 10 minutes for each of the ideas, you have 10 minutes for as many as you have time for. So I'll stop you after 10 minutes, but so the point is that perhaps you should choose to look at the one with the most votes for a start, and then the next most votes, because you won't be able to get through all of them. And the speed critique is everybody can say something about this idea, it can be positive, it can be negative, it can be questions, but the author must stay silent, cannot say anything. And then when the others invite the author in, the author can say, what I actually meant was this, and this is the answer to the question, and the problem that you pointed out here I actually remedied with this, or it, they could just say, thank you, I got so much wiser, okay? So this is difficult, and you have 10 minutes, and maybe you'll, maybe you'll make only one, maybe you'll make two. Are you ready? Yes. Good, go ahead. Be on the solution itself of the way how it is presented. Uh, it's difficult to take those apart right now. Yeah, the solution preferably. Thank <laughs> you. 
existing city we can make a better their uh, pollution index so it is the new new one actually what i think uh, i have to create it one i just imagine the, when i am going to create one city it will develop the city then it should be the model uh, yeah so yeah so you have a little little project that you you do it in one city and make that a model and then other people can look at that then you can evaluate after that city is that what you meant mostly i see the people are creating the existing one so they are creating the car they make the better transportation ah uh, uh, yeah. yeah but you'd like to start from scratch whatever you will do technology wise it is good i'm not talking about but we also focus on the nature yes. natural resources yeah so we should the ventilation in the city like what we are using in home mm. so create a plants yeah. and the proper gap between the homes and road and whatever yeah create a water places yeah earlier in my uh, old days we go then cities build up like that yeah yeah that that is the way it should be done yeah One minute more? Okay. One more minute. We're struggling to figure out as to how do we go about uh, doing this thing now. So what my, my, my understanding, and I'm sure I could be wrong there, is that we have got this board. We have put the votes around as to what is, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from an understanding perspective, what would be the most appropriate yes, solution. Yes. So the critics have gone ahead and gone and spoken about yeah. why or why not yeah. it is relevant. Yes. So what is the role of 
uh, you know the person who has actually formulated or authored this so what does he expected to do he, he or is she is expected to listen, to listen and okay. shut up and you answer questions up. afterwards ask questions or no, answer answer afterwards but but when you discuss otherwise people is there allowed defend or explain no just ask or answer them yeah. so yeah. while while they while they're critiquing this solution should shut up uh, okay i i know you'd like more time and that is wonderful but you also want to eat right so Well, I, th I really love being in India. People actually talk to each other. You should try coming to Denmark. You'll be the only one talking. So uh, this, this speed critique, just to debrief the exercise, uh, because I talked to some of you about it. The, the important thing about the speed critique is that the, the ideas stand on their own. So the author of the ideas cannot uh, protect the idea or defend the idea while she or he is getting critiqued, the author is quiet. And only after the critique from the others is done, the author is invited in to protect or answer questions or defend. So that is the point of it. Now, I know that we are only pretending that you've done speed critique on all of them, but I will still ask you to vote You'll have about three minutes. I put some blue dots around. Everybody in the team gets one blue dot. I'll talk about the decider dot later. Everybody should get one blue dot. And then you put the dot on the solution that you think is the best. If you cannot choose a solution, it can be part of a solution. OK, question? Yeah. yeah. Supposing you there find solution, and now we are on a specific area of Yes. Yeah. So you're getting a little bit ahead of me. <laughs> so the question is, what if there is something good in more than one solution? What if the actual solution would be like a combination of parts of the different solutions? It's a very good question. Uh, and what happens is that after we have decided, you will be creating a storyboard. And that storyboard will be your combined solution. And for making the storyboard, that's a big pieces of paper, you're looking at all the different solutions or different parts of solutions that you like, and then you create a combined solution from that. Does that make sense? Did it answer your question? Yes. Good. But for now, just take one blue dot each and put it on the solution or the idea that you like the most. Only 15, I thought I had 17. There's 15. Oh. Okay, so now you've all put one blue, blue dot. Now I want the deciders to come up here and take a green dot. You need some exercise. Take one green dot here. All deciders. Will you hand them out to the deciders? Or? Everybody come to this man and take a green dot. And then the decider gets, again, a super vote. Yes? Sorry? Earlier we did some voting. Mm -hmm. Now why are we voting again? Yeah, so interesting question. Why are we voting again? So the first, the first, vote, the first vote was based on what you could see without talking to the author, just taking it from outside, just in, initially what you liked, and now you've had the, uh, the art museum and you've had the speed critique, and now you know a little bit more about the author's idea, and now you get to vote again with different mindset, with different knowledge. And the interesting thing is to get the initial vote and then see it together with the vote after the speed critique. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? 
Yes, so I, I, I will give the slide decks to the, uh, to the uh, conference and you'll be able to get it some way. I don't know why, how, but, but that's what they told me. And I will also say that if you want to create a slide deck that is even prettier than mine, yeah, that's, that got your attention, right? If you want to create a slide deck that's even prettier than mine, you either buy this book and follow the link, or you just cheat. And without buying this book, you go to the Design Sprint book online, and then you can download PowerPoint slides, or Keynote slides, or PDFs. I didn't write the book, but... I know there's more questions, but... We have 14 minutes left, so now is time to create the storyboard. I have mentioned the storyboard at times, and so you have to take a big piece of paper, and now you combine together the solutions that you have. It could be that you have one solution that you just flesh out, or it could be that you have a number of solutions that you put there. And you can either start from scratch on this, and draw everything, or you can take the post-it notes that you have and put them on, or you can uh, take pieces of paper and put them on in all sorts of creative ways. Some people do a 3D version of a story map. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> and you start now. Stories well, what, what, what we mean with a storyboard is just that you put all the different stories together to make a, a big story. But it's that we're the same, so I'm just going to say it. So normally when you make a storyboard for a solution, it could be like, this is what the computer shows right now, this is what the user does, but it could also be like user stories that you put together. And in this case, when having a challenge and trying to solve it, what you probably do is that you'll say, this is the first step for implementing this. This is the second step for implementing this. Yeah. Well, in this case, well, normally it wouldn't be how to implement the software systems. But in this case, when it's like creating awareness, how do you execute it? How do you, how do you create awareness? Not, not normally, no. But when I say implementing here, I mean how do you actually take these ideas and create them? Um, I don't know how you get the PowerPoint from the conference. Perhaps you get an email or something like that. But you can also, I mean, if you just look for the Sprint book online, then there's a link to PowerPoint. Not mine, but theirs. Okay. Yep. Right. I am, I am truly sorry that I have to stop your communications again. So, the storyboard would now be at a state where you would start to figure out how to actually implement it. To some of the people I said, for this idea, you will make a storyboard of how to implement it. And when I say implement it in this, I don't mean like implement it in software. Normally, if we were doing a software system, we wouldn't be thinking about implementation of the software system. So, the prototype is what will do the implementation actually on the fourth day. So now it is Thursday morning, and you have nothing more to do in this session because we only have five minutes left. So I'll take the last two days in five minutes. So what you do on the fourth day is that you pick the right tools. And picking the right tools could be, for instance, for this idea, picking the right tools would be um, 
Perhaps we write it down, perhaps we make a PowerPoint to inspire people, and then you divide and conquer who can do this, who can do that. Then we make an actual prototype, and we test it along the way, the functionality test, and then we prepare the interviews for the Friday, so we uh, create a script, and we make sure to have gifts to give people. So we decide how to build the prototype, and it could be like you make an actual app, or it could be uh, some sort of uh, very shallow implementation of the system. It is only a prototype, so it's only made for something to learn. But the important thing here is that it's not enough just to have pieces of paper. You need to show something to the users Friday that looks like what you want to do. So in our case with the prototype, it could be actual letters to the government or actual posters to hang on the walls or something like that, whatever your solutions have been. And then in parallel, you'll both prototype and test the design. So that was Thursday. And Friday, you validate it. And what you do here is that you have two rooms. You have one room where the at least five different users are looking at your idea. In your case, it could be researchers, somebody from industry, somebody from the government, somebody like normal citizens, anything that could look at your ideas. And then you have video so that there will be one interviewing um, the, the user and then everybody else will look at the reactions over video from a different room so that you're not all ogling that poor uh, test person. Five is the magic number, you need at least five, and it should be a five-act interview. In the Design Sprint book, there's a very thorough description of how to create a user interview. You probably have your own ideas, they have a very firm idea as well. Remember to take notes, remember to look for patterns. This person said this, and this person said this, and maybe on the surface they look like they're different things, but there's actually a pattern that's going on. And then you wrap up at the end of the day, and you look at all the patterns, you look at all the answers, you look at all the notes, and you say, well, this worked, this didn't work, so the future is we will focus on this part, and we'll start Monday, and these people will be part of it. So you'll make a plan during your, your wrap up. And what you have for the usability testing is that you should have the complete storyboard, you should have identified five key moments, I didn't have time to get into that, but you probably understand that we'll have to focus on things, uh, high fidelity mocks for those moments, and partially build quick prototypes. And the important thing, I think, also in the design sprint when looking at the users, is not to get feedback. So you're not just asking, what do you think of this? How do you like the color of this? Can you work with this? But the important thing is to show them something that is real, or as real as possible, and look at the reactions. And that's why the video is important, and that's why it's important to take notes, because you're not just asking them, you're looking at real people's reactions to your realistic prototypes. So that was the five days design sprint, and of course, as always, whenever you do anything, you should review it. And what I'd like you to do now, silently, individually, is think about for 30 seconds what you got out of these 90 minutes together with the design sprint. And it's okay if you say, I got nothing out of it, it was the worst 90 minutes in my life, because I won't hear what you're saying. So just think about it for 30 seconds. Yeah, so Romanian time again. And that means that now you will spend 30 seconds talking to the other people at the table, just sharing what did you get out of this? What, what is your takeaway? It's okay if you just share it with your neighbor, if you have a lot of people on the table. 30 seconds to share very shortly. Check is this whole thing, how does this fit into the standard development life cycle of software? Because they say there's nothing like a separate thing. It is a separate thing, yeah. So what we do, I've been at eBay in Denmark implementing this, and what we do is that if somebody's got an idea that's like a big idea, instead of just brainstorming normally and making OKRs and putting it into the, the Scrum Sprints, what we do is that we say, this is actually a big thing. We need to make a design sprint first. And then sometimes what we get in those design sprints is some really good prototypes and we get good evaluations. But I've also tried sometimes that 
after the first two days, we understand that we don't know enough to solve this problem. And then some people say, well, you wasted two days, but actually we gained a lot of time because they, normally we would just have started, but we very fast. We... Thank you for your time. Uh, before, before, before we stop, I want to say that those of you who want to play the icebreaker game that I mentioned in the beginning, join me up there. But I'll just say thank you for your time and enjoy the holiday. <laughs>